Hey, welcome to DIY Fab Shop. Super excited to be in the new shop for this next episode. Let me give you a look, quick look around. If you caught the time-lapse video of the construction of the shop, you may recall that this is a SIP panel construction and I specified plywood for the interior. Um, a lot of times it would be OSB, but I specified plywood so it would probably finish a little bit better than OSB. And I had the metal come about halfway down, leaving about eight feet of plywood for the walls. And really the purpose was to take some of the echo out, but also have something that I can hang things to really easily, you know, drive some screws in and go. All right, so before I move everything in, I want to paint the walls and hopefully epoxy the floors. So I'm gonna start by painting the walls and uh, to paint the plywood. I picked up a Harbor Freight sprayer. I'm going to give that a shot. And I decided to actually try and prep the walls a little bit. I'm going to do some sanding. So I actually picked up Harbor Freight drywall sander. And I'm going to see how well this works on plywood. Uh, so far, in the couple experiments I've done works pretty good. I'm just going to go for it. Okay, you definitely don't have to watch me sand all of this. All right, let me share what I learned about using this Harbor Freight drywall sander on plywood walls. Um, you know, this is just C-grade plywood, obviously not to meant to be finely finished, full of knots and imperfections. I just wanted to knock off the high spots, take care of any loose splinters, generally clean it in preparation for paint, and it really did a pretty good job of that. Um, I really just used a technique of making a couple passes over each area. Didn't really focus on making it super smooth. You know, you could really spend way more time than it's probably worth. I just kind of went around, uh, made sure I hit every spot and kind of looked for those things I wanted to make sure I knocked off. Um, the sander worked really good. It did clog periodically through these holes that are meant to pull the dust away on the face. I just proactively had to turn off the sander kind of hit the face of it with the vacuum still on and it would uh, clear away the clogs. And actually, once I figured that out, it went pretty smoothly. After that, I vacuumed with the shop vac, all the face of it really focusing on where the dust was collecting, which was in the recesses between the panels and the knot faces and in the nail holes. And after that, I masked everything. And I'll show you that next. So I went around with traditional painter's tape to create the edge that I wanted to mask to. And then I came back with this pre-taped uh, plastic sheeting. I thought it worked pretty well. This is a duck brand. Uh, I know there's other ones as well. But uh, if you pre-tape with the painter's tape, putting this down goes pretty quick because you don't have to get right on the edge. And you're more focused just about pulling the sheeting out of the dispenser. And it's even got a little handy tear strip on it, so it worked pretty great. I probably spent way more time uh, masking than somebody more experienced in spraying has to do. Um, I got like 15 gallons of paint to spray and back roll, and um, I'm a beginner with a, a sprayer like this, so I didn't wanna try and manipulate a shield uh, at the same time like a pro would, so I spent a lot of time masking. You know, at a certain point, I was like, huh, I wonder if I should just rolled it because uh, the masking took a while. But I think in the end, I'm gonna be happy with uh, spraying to get into those seams between the plywood, the deep knot faces, and with the back rolling, um, hoping it's gonna go pretty well. So let's head on over to the Harbor Freight sprayer and get started. So I started with a Sherwin-Williams multi-purpose primer, and I wanted to start with a good primer with some blocking capabilities because the plywood still had some marking ink on it and I didn't want to bleed that through uh, into my top coat. So here, just you know, getting used to the sprayer, um, working on keeping the sprayer perpendicular to the workpiece and practicing my overlap. You know, I, I haven't done much spraying with this type of sprayer, um, but I know enough to be dangerous. I'm gonna back roll with uh, 18 inch roller with a three quarter inch thick nap on it, you know, really to help push the paint into the wall uh, to help with adhesion and, of course, uh, clean up any of the runs uh, from spraying. Yeah, 
in the spirit of sharing things that just didn't work, you know, quickly realized that the thin plastic sheeting for a drop cloth isn't going to work with a sprayer. I made a feeble attempt to try and tape it down, but kind of quickly realized that uh, even that wasn't going to cut it. So at a certain point, I had to grab some canvas drop cloths that had a little mass to them, and those worked just great. The primer sprayed on pretty thick, but uh, it still flowed pretty well, so it wasn't too bad. I, I was never tempted to thin it out or anything, uh, especially as a, a blocking primer. I wanted to just use it as is. So just like the sanding, uh, no reason to show all the priming either. Uh, a lot funner to see the color go on. I picked uh, gray instead of white for the final color. I wanted something that would I had some fingerprints, I guess. I went with Sherwin-Williams Duration Home Interior Acrylic Latex. In this case, uh, Network Gray, it's called. The Duration Top Coat really sprayed on nice uh, if you compare it to the primer. Um, you know, these big open sections could really move. You know, a little bit more tricky when I uh, had to come around the windows and had more things that were masked off. But still, uh, all in all, uh, it did confirm that I was super happy that I chose to spray it. Uh, you know, trying to do this with a roller and brush would have just been really challenging. As I edit the video, I noticed that uh, the gray looked kind of green on my screen. I'm not sure what it's looking like for you, but I can assure you it is a uh, light gray, especially as it dries. So this last stretch wraps up the first coat of gray. Uh, I do intend to put a second coat on, but for now, celebration. Okay, time to reveal my big fail. Uh, two feet of sheeting above the plywood was not enough masking and I got overspray all over the metal. A huge, huge mess. Uh, I did learn that 99% isopropyl alcohol is a fairly decent solvent for dealing with that. Of course, I had to have it well ventilated and a respirator and it still, it just took forever. So I couldn't help but think, gosh, I feel like I learned this lesson two decades ago and I can't believe I repeated it. So learn from my mistake. Uh, make sure that you've done a good job masking everything, uh, especially when you're using a sprayer. Well, here's the finished product after dealing with all that overspray. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. I think the Harbor Freight drywall sander uh, did a great job kind of prepping the plywood for paint and the Harbor Freight airless sprayer also did a great job and made it manageable for a single person to kind of do over a weekend. Uh, you see I painted the trim around the doors, give it a little bit of accent, and the shop has been completely cleaned out because the floors are going to be done uh, starting this week. So super excited about that. I'm also excited to say that I have found and purchased my project car. So as predicted, a 1969 Pontiac Firebird. Uh, it's going to need a lot of work. It needs all new steel uh, below the belt line. Uh, floors are rusted out. Fenders are rusted out. Rear quarters are rusted out. Uh, it's going to be a ton of work. Just a roller, no transmission or engine, and the interior is pretty sparse. But here's the starting point. Can't wait to get the shop done so I can get started. Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time on DIY Fab Shop. <laughs>